Hello everyone. Welcome to Indian Economy by Amon Soni. In today's news, sir, we shall be discussing the important articles related to economy from the Hindu newspaper. India Russia trying to bypass sanctions. We know because of the sanctions imposed on Russia by the Western world, Russia and India are now trying to see how they can bypass the sanctions and decide some other payment system. So for that, the India and Russia have been on talks to have a rupee Russian ruble payment mechanism, wherein for the imports and exports, we would be making payments in the Russian rubles or the Indian rupees. That way we could avoid paying through dollars because Russia has been partially sanctioned from dealing in the swift payment system. Editorial Sri Lanka's rage. We have been reading about the economic crisis that has been happening in Sri Lanka and yesterday and day before yesterday the people of Sri Lanka turned violent because of the situation that they were facing and the protesters gathered near the president's house and they were destroying things there. And why, why did this thing happen? Because people are restless because of the high inflation and the prices of the essential commodities. People are not able to afford milk for the children. People are not able to afford fuel and food. Because of which they have been doing strikes. And the editorial goes into the details of why did this crisis come in. They say that the, some of the economic problems were inherited by the current government from the previous government. And the pandemic also increased the burden of the current government. And the current government is also responsible for many of the poor policy decision making. For example, they reduced the income tax rates and the number of VAT registration threshold because of which the tax revenues of the government got affected tremendously, which also led to a loss of revenue. And overnight the Sri Lankan government tried to put a ban on the chemical fertilizers and they wanted to shift to the organic farming, which was a bad move again because organic farming would affect the crop yields. And even though after few months in November, when the ban was removed and people were allowed to do the chemical fertilizer usage in the agriculture, still the yield got affected and the impact that it had for the few months where only organic farming was done, the impact on the food security got hampered. Then government also showed apathy to the people during the pandemic and one of the reasons we could say is the excessive borrowing at high interest rates from China which we know as the China's debt trap diplomacy and they are also responsible for the economic mismanagement and the use of public resources and they also mishandled the monetary policy and the other reason being the conditionalities imposed by the International Monetary Fund when they gave funds to the Sri Lankan government instead of bringing out the economy from the clutches of downward growth it further pushed it down towards the non-performance and Sri Lanka is such nation where it is heavily dependent on imports for its basic essential items and the re main revenue that it gets through the foreign exchange is to tourism export of basic raw material primary goods like tea plantations etc and because of the eastern sunday bombings the tourism sector got affected and during the pandemic on one side because of the top in the chemical fertilizer usage the yields got affected because of the pandemic again the workers from the western nations they had to come back to the sri lanka without jobs and the remittances that they were getting that also reduced. So what did other countries do to help Sri Lanka? India had to the extent of 2.4 billion dollars helped by extending a credit line by giving loan deferment. China also had provided 2.5 billion dollars and it was in further talks to provide another 2.4 billion dollars. And again Sri Lanka is now looking towards the IMF for bailing it by giving a package. Again the package that IMF gives would not come with a free rider it would have some conditionalities and let's hope that those conditionalities would help the Sri Lankan government to bring the economy out of the downward growth so now currently the leadership has to be empathetic towards the public because of the rising high rising inflation the public are turning violent riots have been taking place 
and they have to take decisions to stop the further downward spiral of the economy and improve the economy this article talks about the recent beamstick summit and what it means for economy and all the south asian countries that are part of the beamstick so recently the beamstick summit happened in colombo and many of the country leaders virtually met during the summit and this is the 25th anniversary of beamstick the states in beamstick are bangladesh bhutan india nepal sri lanka and the two southeast asian countries which are myanmar and thailand so in this summit the basic purpose and the vision document and the charter of the beamstick was released and what is the importance of beamstick it comprises of the nations which almost make up one fifth of the world population but at the same time it just produces the 4% of global gdp so here is a cause of concern because these countries make up for one fifth of the world population but they only contribute to 4% of global gdp so we need to make actions to increase this contribution and what did happen in the colombo summit the beamstick member nations redefined the purpose of the beamstick and that started during the 2016 leaders retreat convened by india now the purpose and the charter of beamstick was released and the group said that it is an intergovernmental organization because it is made up of different governments and it has acquired a legal personality and in defining the purposes 11 items were included in the first article of the beamstick charter and what are those purposes to increase the economic growth and the social progress in the bay of bengal region and to promote multidimensional connectivity between the regions of the beamstick and the other reason decision which was taken during the colombo meet was instead of focusing on the 14 sectors for corporation cooperation the number of sectors for cooperation reduced to seven sectors and each state each member state was given lead to focus on a particular sector for example bangladesh was supposed to focus on the trade investment and development part of the goal bhutan has to focus on the environment and climate change india had to focus on the security including energy goals myanmar on the agriculture and food security nepal on people to people contacts thailand on connectivity and sri lanka on science and technology and innovation so if you can see that whatever is the positive aspect of a nation which are thing the nation is performing better that has been allocated to that particular nation to look after for example we know that bhutan is doing very well in avoiding climate change and being environmentally sustainable and india could be a very good net security provider and the development of india in the social in installing the solar sector in this installing the solar grid power capacity is high and bangladesh is improving when it comes to exports of garments so bangladesh has been given the trade investment and development aspect so the beamstick member nations they are trying to exploit the strength of each of the member by looking after a particular segment and the participants also adopted the master plan for transport connectivity between the bay of bengal nations and the funding is to be given by the asian development bank almost the beamstick has around 264 projects which need a investment of 126 billion dollars out of which projects worth 55 billion dollars are already in implementation and the article says that we need additional funding and push for the timely implementation of the project because one of the reasons is that the projects are continuously getting delayed and the main reason is that because of the lack of funding or the proper funding is not believe, released at the timely manner then new agreements have to be signed between the members related to the legal assistance in criminal matters cooperation in diplomatic ac academies then establishment of technology transfer facilities in colombo all this also took place in the colombo summit and just like any other organization beamstick also suffers from certain challenges and what are those challenges when it comes to trade the economic and investment cooperation 
people are saying it and putting it on paper but in reality the implementation is not happening so whatever the cooperation when it comes to economic and investment it has to be moving at a faster pace we wanted a free trade agreement between the people of members of beamstech but in order to get the free trade agreement seven conditionalities have to be achieved and only two of them were achieved till now so we know that the free trade agreement is moving at a slow place and every country said that we need for connectivity between all the nations but when it comes to finalizing it on the ground when it comes to implementing it on the country level we need legal instruments with respect to coastal shipping road transportation and the interregional energy transmission that is not been happening on the ground on the positive side when it comes to cooperation on the security matters and the humanitarian assistance and disaster relief we have been doing a good job because security and economic development are interrelated we need to focus on the interrelation between the security and economic development and balance these two pillars so that we can both achieve the security in the region and the economic development of the region the members also felt that we have been slow in achieving the sustainable development goals and the pandemic has further increased the problem in achieving our goals and the other members also called for a pro beamstech that is prosperous resilient robust and open beamstech and india was the only country to walk the talk india gave additional funding for the functioning of the secretariat and the editorial the article says that even other countries have to walk their talk they just should not give promises in words but they have to put it into action and because of the myanmar's and rohingya issue the participation of myanmar was limited to foreign ministerial level so that the other countries would not call out the member nations of beamstech for allowing myanmar to participate at a full level the author suggests that in future beamstech has to focus on new areas the emerging areas such as the blue economy the digital economy promoting and exchanging linkages between the startups in these countries linkages between the msmes in the beamstech countries and apart from this other suggestions are there should be the personal engagement of political leadership at a personal level and the informal summits that we have apart from the formal summits we need to have informal retreats between the leaders so there will be more contact currently it was proposed that we we will have summits every 2 years so the author says that probably we should have it every 1 year so that there will be more meetings happening and beamstech as a grouping needs more visibility and when india calls the g20 leader summit in 2021 and hosts the g20 leader summit at that particular point of time all the gsec beamstech members have to be called as invitees by the india so that beamstech as a grouping we'd get international recognition at that time and finally the author suggests that the grouping name should be simplified now it is very long with the name beamstech probably if it is reduced to bobc bay of bengal community it would be easier and the recognition could also be more spread that's about this article here in the open editorial page no need to read the sri lankan crisis article because we have been discussing about the sri lankan crisis you can skip that in the business page gst collections have hit a record high again because of the increase in the gst collection and the government's crackdown on the tax evaders the gst collections have been continuously increasing and it is increasing over the estimated revenues of the government because of which whatever the budgetary estimates of the government in the budget document was the revenues actually will be more than that so it is a good thing for indian economy generally what happens we would collect less than the budgetary estimate but here if we are going to collect gst at this level we are going to cross the budgetary estimates and the collections were 15% higher compared to the same time last year and 46% more, more than march 2020 and one of the main components is the revenue from the imported goods which is 25% higher 
and the other macroeconomic indicator is the number of eva bills generated when the goods under gst are trans transferred from one place to another place the eva bill has to be generated and the eva bill shows the transport of goods happening so that the government could track through the eva bill and make sure that the gst is paid so the number of eva bills generated also exceeded this shows that the trade is happening at a good rate and other reasons for increase in the gst revenue is the government crack down on the tax evading people who generate fake bills they have been punished and gst has been collected on those items and apart from high gst collections increase in the custom duties and the increase in the direct tax collections this also would add to the increase in gross revenue of the government so if government gets more revenue than the budgeted estimate the government would have more freedom to spend the amount especially at a time when the global crude oil prices are increasing the government would have some safe base because it is getting the revenue we can skip this article related to auto sales and this article related to properties also could be skipped these are the articles related to economy today thank you so much